This is it, man. Night cool. Society Studios. Awesome. That's what magic happens. Yeah. Let's get it. Chef, welcome to the Mind Society Studio Thanks, Kitchen. Bro. Thank you. Joe Balon, sous chef, Shibosu, Adelaide. Talk to us about what we're gonna have today as your little spam snack, Chef. So it's my little takeoff, like my ISO snack, dedicated to coronavirus, of course. So it's gonna be like fried chicken wings, stuffed with spam and water chestnut. Ooh. Side with a bit of um, refried beans, exo sauce, some lap chong. It's gonna be pretty tasty. It's something like you know, just wanna buzz out. Quite a little snack also that can go towards lunch and dinner. So the majority of our stuff we got from the Asian grocer, our yep. local Asian grocer. Yep. We got some spam light for all of the folks that are trying to watch well, that's it. their weight during coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, we got some frijoles. Mm -hmm. That's how I like to call them. Yeah. And we also got some of that water chestnut hole. Yeah, just to give the crunch, the texture inside the wing, you know? The Kentucky. That's the main ingredient. You gotta have the Kentucky fried chicken. Flour. This is the glow sand. We got the Chinese style loop chong as yeah. well. Beautiful, it's nice and sweet. This is the best. This is the puppy exo sauce. The exo sauce. And the eggs is pretty much just that we're just gonna use the egg whites. Kind of coat the chicken wings and just like gives it a nice little shell before we fry it. And don't forget to sanitize, bro. You gotta sanitize. This is our ticket. Yeah, palm oh. olive. Palm olive. Pa palm olive. Uh, we got some beautiful fresh chicken, chicken wings here. Ethically sourced for sure, you know. It's one of those things where you gotta make sure the ass butcher, make sure it's not caged. Obviously, we're gonna show you how to like bone out a chicken wing. So we're gonna take off this bit, take the bones out and fill that with all the goodness inside. So we keep this part here. Bread it and then deep fry it. No, no breading. Actually, a friend of mine, he's Vietnamese, he showed me how to do it without the breading. So this is the egg white and the flour deep fried. Ooh. Yeah, straight up. Take me there. Mm, done. Sanitize. I'm gonna use my trusty friend, Pal Olive. Yeah, hit me, oh, yeah. hit me with it. Pal Olive's great. All right, how do we start this out? This is the, main, the hardest part of the job. I'm gonna get you to open the chestnuts for me. How am I gonna open this, Chef? Oh, Swiss Army. Swiss Army knife. So we'll open that first, and at the same time, I'll get the chicken going. As a home cook, you're always gonna put something like something wet or something to stable the chopping board over so it doesn't so it doesn't slide? It doesn't slide. That's what you want. You want to avoid sliding because it's actually quite dangerous, especially when you're doing work at home with the kids and stuff. For sure. What, did I, what, what tool did I use before? What tool did you give me before? Oh, you're using a spoon. Should we do yeah, it? Yeah, you're a psychopath. That's like next level. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. I don't here. think that's going to happen, bro. You don't think so? That's so talented stuff. <laughs> This is how I would do it. I would have done it like I would have done it like this. No, nah, don't use a knife. You got chicken hands, blood. That's all right, bro. And then you gotta oh it's a different one. So you gotta just slide. Oh I got yeah, him! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we yeah, got yeah. you! Here, watch, I got you, watch. Check this out. Oh you start snap. like this. Yes. You start like this, yeah. and then you go around like this. Ah, I see what you mean. You see? I do different. Ah, see. I do it the Mexican see, way. Man. I do the Filipino way. I just get my mom to do it. Yeah, my, mom, mom, I can't do this. Ma, ma, I just do that. <laughs> this is crazy. Mom will be Don't so mad. Hands, mom sorry. will be so mad. Here we go. Here's, here's Kurt doing the action now. <laughs> you get this one and you go this way, like around like that. I just, yeah. I'm scared you're going to cut yourself. Yeah, you don't want to do that. And then you get the spoon and just feel it. Yeah, that's, what, that's it. Yeah, that's some, that's some jailbird stuff. <laughs> He went to South County. LA fucking Inglewood <laughs> shit, right? Drain it, drain it. Yeah, just drain it, put it all in there. So finally, you got the chestnuts out. Thanks, Chef. No worries. Thanks. Sorry, Chef. Awesome. These puppies, when you go to the butchers, this is called the wingette, wing tip. Yep. Yep. This is all chicken wings. Best thing to do is probably, you gotta find this little, like, how would you say, a knuckle? And she just slice it straight through there. Ooh, bang. We'll save that for something else. But yeah, this is the part. What you're gonna do, take up all, all the knuckle part, and then where you're gonna create an incision in here. So pretty much just follow it through the bone. So what you're trying to do is try and get those two chicken bones out without piercing the skin at the same time. Ooh. So this, this might be a bit tricky at home. All you're gonna do is you go to butchers, give them a good wink, exchange numbers and say, hey, I'll follow you on Instagram, that's it. They'll bone it out for you. So they'll just debone it? Yeah, for sure. Proceed with caution. Indeed. 
But also like, you know, if you want to make sauces out of this thing, these parts are the best for like gravy for people at home. Ooh. There's a place in Richmond called Chef Sabri apparently that sell really good knives. That's a plug. Is it? Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> That's all good though. Should we put on some gloves? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Right. So what we're going to do is pretty much scrape the flesh off the bone. Again, you don't want to try and pierce the chicken, right? When you start hearing that, you know you're doing a good job. So just peel that all the way back? Yeah. And also you gotta be careful. You don't wanna, like I said, pierce the skin. Cause otherwise when you put the filling inside, you know what happens, it's gonna pop. So now that the bone's been exposed, I should say, all you gotta do is twist it. Ooh, bang. That's for stocks later. How long have you been at Shibosho? So I've been at Shibosho for Shibosho. about a year and a half now. It's a great restaurant, man. It's probably one of the top restaurants out there in Australia. Yeah, so I've had the good like, privilege to work for Adam Listen. You, you're originally from Melbourne, though. Yeah. Um, so, for the people that don't know. Yep, Filipino background, you know, they, born they, overseas. They better act somebody. Yeah. So now we got all the bones out, all right? So you got two bones out, so you're gonna get this nice little piece of boneless chicken wing. As you can see, the little pocket in there, we're gonna fill that with the mix, the spam mix. Yeah. This is kind of like a fun activity to do with, you know, your significant other as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. It's a good like deboning, so then later you can. <laughs> yeah. How was the transition moving from like Melbourne out to Adelaide? Like, oh, it was very different. Like, I've never been to Adelaide before, and it's one of those things where, especially when you work as a chef, it was never on the map. Like traditionally. Yeah. That's all changing. Yeah, now. yeah, exactly. You know, they got some really nice stuff out there. Oh, yeah, beautiful restaurants. You know, you got Africola, you got Lee Street Wine Room, Henley Farm, all the wineries and whatnot. Because traditionally what would happen was you'd get chefs that wanted to progress their career and they'd move from South Australia to Melbourne. Exactly, yeah. Okay, we'll go fast now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just messing around before. Yeah. You, you get on to the next thing. Cool. Yeah, you got it right. That's good. What we're gonna do, we're gonna make the stuffing next. You know, with this one, you're gonna make it so it's like nice 180 degrees. Yeah, so to fry your vegetable oil. If you can even go fancy, you can use olive oil and vegetable oil. Chef, before you went out to Adelaide, what, what were you doing here in Melbourne? Fancy restaurants. Yeah, the yeah. fancy. Nah, fancy so I've, I've worked everywhere, like good establishments around Sydney and Melbourne. How long were you in Melbourne? I mean, in uh, Sydney, my bad. I was there for about five years. Yep. Worked at Iceberg's dining room. Ooh. Yeah, was that's there for an a while. institution. Yeah, and then, then a few other places that unfortunately don't exist anymore. And it it's was, a uh, tough game. Yeah. But prior to Sabosho, I was at Grossi Florentino. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah. So I was working under Guy Grossi. Yep. That was pretty cool. I saw you there, remember? Yeah, that was fun. And then. Um, I think I showed up real drunk, I think, that time. Whoa, Did you? I actually, a lot of people that come visit me are always drunk. I don't know why. But. <laughs> It's always been my my aura it brings out the <laughs> drunkenness out of everyone, which is cool. I don't mind it. Spam. Normally, I'd get the other spam that's got like much heavier, but this is for the health conscious people. You know, it's like we got I don't want no fat or something light. We got to stay dirty healthy. at the same time. We got to stay healthy during COVID. But this uh, dish is not up. really healthy. It's quite the dirtiest dish you could ever think of. You got to walk out two months later even dirtier than the start. You know. Mm. So right now, I'm just gonna dice up water chestnut. So just roughly dice it. Have you been dealing with the COVID situation and the isolation and the lockdown and stuff? I guess it's different from each chef. From employer's side, it's going to be different because of the money situation and whatnot. And of course. At the moment, to be honest, like I'm quite enjoying the time off. With most chefs, they hardly see their family. So for me, it was like the main thing was like, I get to see my family, I get to see all everyone out. Mind you, the isolation comes with it, but it's going to be different. It's very, how would you say, peaceful and chaotic at the same time. There's gonna be nights where obviously I'm gonna be worried about if I'm gonna have a job, what am I gonna do like with this whole spare time, but you gotta to learn to adapt. You optimistic about um, oh. post-COVID? Yeah, always. You say we're very resilient, hospitality-wise. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, I can't speak for everyone else, but I know that it's gonna be a tough one for a lot of the business owners where a lot of restaurants are gonna be closed down after this. Tough decisions yeah. as well, like with, with business owners. Like, yeah. do they want to come back? Like, or do they have the energy and- I think so. through the, the stress and the anxiety? I think so. Like, I think, you know, the main factors at the moment is keeping afloat and trying to figure out what's in the future. 
visa holders are the worst hit, and I feel sorry for them. Yeah, but, yeah, because you know, they don't get any benefits. Oh, they, they're, yeah. they're, um, I have a friend that works, he's a sous chef at a Mexican food restaurant. He's yeah. from Colombia. Uh, like he was going through the whole process of PR and all that stuff, but yeah. the timing of, the, of COVID, mm. like, he isn't a PR, he isn't PR yet, so he yeah. doesn't get absolutely any assistance from the government. That sucks, man. The lease is under his name, and yeah. like, uh, he's gotta really figure a lot of stuff out. These guys actually are the main engines in the restaurants. They work long hours with minimal pay, and they have to pay money just to say, you know, it's a piece of paper to say they're a citizen. So, this is the water chestnut now. It's roughly diced, it's like, it's not fine diced, it's still got a bit of texture into it. Yep. And it's gonna, we're gonna incorporate that with the, um, the spam. Are you, how are you drawing your inspiration? Like, dude, dude, like, you know, honestly, like, the moment of what I've been doing is a lot, just a lot of exercise. You stopped drinking? Yeah, for, I was, for a I was, bit. yeah, sober for five weeks. I've been talking to a couple of my chef mates, and yeah. they're doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, other people in the industry, not only chefs, like yeah. people front of the house, like owners of restaurants. Yeah. I guess once again, it's different to each like different chefs. Like I'd like to think I'm a bit of an introvert, where I don't need that kind of thing, where I like my right. personal space. And when I do need to mingle with somebody, yeah, it's always a phone call away. Like, but keeping my mind stable, you know, that's why I've been I was sober for five weeks because that's the last thing I want to do is when the calm downs and yeah. And to me, that's where like the worst part of it is. For for like the chefs watching, like, do you have any advice for the chefs on how to deal with stuff? Just call your closest mates, have a chat. So simple. It's always a phone call, man. It's always going to be the main thing. And don't get me wrong, I still keep in contact with my mates every day. It's not about like, yeah, like I said, I like my own space, but there are times where you just need that little bit of smile, a bit of tickle in the bum, you would say. Man, you can't get enough. Tickle in the bums nowadays. Yeah, it's there. It's definitely, it's a chef thing, I think. Yeah. I love the fondle. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just a part of the uh, of the experience, really. Yeah. It's all about consent. It's always consent, about consent. Yeah. As far as like uh, suppliers and stuff like that, how are they? How are they faring with all of this change as well? It's obviously it's a domino effect, you know. You know, I think the worst hits are pretty much the farmers because an article about um, on the paper not longer like there was there was no one no workers because all their workers were visa holders and they couldn't hold them. And right. then, so all these vegetables and fruit was just sitting there to rot right. and they couldn't move it. And then at the same time, suppliers couldn't take it. Restaurants are closed, you know, that's where I think suppliers now are adapting. Yeah, the, the homie that we yeah. ran into that was, he's a veg supplier in yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. We just happened to run into him when we were doing the shop and yeah. he was talking about how he was up since two in the morning making yeah. deliveries. That's crazy. Wow. Before where they would deliver to restaurants, yeah. the large majority of their stuff. Now they're home delivering yeah. many, many more deliveries though. A day. Yeah, and also with all the border closing, like nothing's moving. It's buckled the whole economy. That's been like it's not just like obviously the chefs as well. We're all sitting around waiting to be called into work and front of the house staff too. Like we haven't really talked about front of the house staff and front of the house staff typically are like extroverts, so they need that social interaction, right? With the front of house staff, especially with all the restaurants doing takeaways now, like there's only a limit of people that can, they can hire. Obviously, full timers. The rest are kind of be stuck in the dark again. This is the reason why we're we're doing this because there's so many different perspectives. On it. Even within the industry, like there's there's chefs that are quite uh, happy with what the government's done, and, yeah. and they feel like what they've done is is enough for now. Yeah, yeah. But we also get that other side as well, which is like, yeah, the government isn't doing enough, and it's a it's a touchy one though. It's like it is. It's, it's a touchy one because because like they are helping with something, you know. Well, you know, you can't really hate on the government because they're doing their best and whatnot. It's one of those things, but we weren't prepared for it. So I'm gonna get the spam out. I'm gonna mix it with a chestnut, it's a bit of salt. You can lightly fry it. Ooh. Lightly fry it and add it into the mix. What we're gonna do is just gonna cut it raw. It's pretty much it's already cooked anyway. And that's what Ooh. Ooh. the goodness. You know, this block is like worth more than gold bullion. <laughs> <laughs> it smells great. It's it's a massive, it's a massive thing up in um in Hawaii as yeah. well, like huge part of the culture. I don't know what I don't know, know how that came every up. Asian household out there is always spam in the cupboard. You gotta have spam. Gotta spam, have spam. spam. Gotta have spam. I don't think we need salt, because it's quite salty already. <laughs> mm. Out. In, out. In, out. Oh, fancy, in, out. fancy. In, out. fancy. In, out. Yeah, yeah. You can taste the light. I don't know, I just had a heart attack. That's one thing, <laughs> for sure it's light. Like, there's gonna be a lot of people like, oh, it's spam, it's like dog food. Like, uh, like <laughs> have you ever actually tasted spam? Like, it's spam itself, man. You fry it, a bit of egg. It's so versatile. Straight rice, steamed rice, do whatever you want. Stuffed chicken wings. Like ghetto style. 
like for a single man like me that lives by home by himself. Are you single? Yeah, I'm very single. All right, all right. Very, very, very single. So my handle how is- was, um, How has that been with, uh, with COVID? How has that been? You know what? It let's is not, quite. Let's not get too detailed, but like, how, yeah. how are you? Uh, it's quite are you funny because connecting like, with people. You know, dating apps at the moment is quite strong. Like, it's, is it? Yeah, bro. Like, it's one of those things. Where unfortunately, it's like you can't go out and meet them in person, but you can always meet them online. Instagram so they, is like so they can kind of. <laughs> Man, I'm busting when it comes to it, bro. Like, who are you? I'm Joel Balon. Here's my handle. Like, oh, my here's God, my handle. You're a chef. Like, oh. <laughs> What's your favorite food to cook? I'm like, hmm. What isn't my favorite food to cook? <laughs> yeah. No, it's actually how do you, good. How do you like vet your potential partners, I guess? Like how do you, with everything digital, do you, it's just like you kind of just perv on their pictures or what? Like what? You just look at the Instagram and look at them straight in the eye and go, you're mine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. you like every photo that goes back to 2012. <laughs> <laughs> that's so creepy. Yeah, you, know, you know that, that that's like that's so serious. Creepy. Like, that's so serious. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna mix this lightly to the chestnut mix. I'm gonna use the oil from the um, exo sauce. Stop it. Yeah. To jazz it up a bit. Oh, so sexy. And typically, like obviously non-coronavirus time, we would make that exo sauce for sure. We'd like make you it know, from scratch. like now everyone's got like plenty of time. Like everyone's baking bread, man. Like no doubt. You can make everyone's a baker. Sauce, like, everyone's a baker right yeah. now. Yeah. How do you feel about that? How are you feel about it's, it's a good thing, right? Like that people oh, are getting great. into the kitchen. Like, 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 look, man, it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, beforehand was like people taking photos of their food and where they at, like eat, eat and yeah. these days it's like yeah. it's in the kitchen. Like I've seen like online, it's pretty funny because it's like you look at the worst breads, <laughs> best looking yeah. bread. You can tell like the before and after shot of breads. Also as well, like I think I think it would give people a little bit more appreciation when they go and eat at a restaurant oh, when it's sure. all over. So now you got the mix. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh wow. Yeah. Speaking of getting back into restaurants, like what's your opinion? Are people gonna be rushing back and how are restaurants gonna be running it? Is there gonna be social distancing within the restaurant before? Look, like, it's gonna be like it's definitely gonna be a struggle for a bit. It's gonna take a while to get back in the rhythm again where like dining out. There's gonna be people that's gonna be too scared to eat out. There's gonna be like the foodie. It's gonna be hitting this, like the restaurants again. And do you think there's gonna be bloggers? Of course. <laughs> of course. I was like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> do you think they'll be as harsh? Do you think they'll be as harsh? No, no. I hope not. I, I fing hope not. Yeah, because that's. Sorry, but that's yeah. like, if, that, if they're so harsh, like that's why there's no critics writing at the moment, because they don't yeah. have any restaurants. Where are they? Yeah. Where are they? But Where the thing the is, like, they shouldn't do that. That's just harsh. And it's. It destroys business, man. Yeah, exactly. Like it destroys business, like, there's, there's and they good, destroy, they destroy you on social in media. In a way, like there is, there's good, good bloggers and there's bad bloggers. But like people that are influencers that like want to eat. Yeah, that influencers the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that kind of stuff. I call them influenza. Yeah. Influenza <laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah, they're disease, you know. Yeah, for real. Where they expect so much, like oh, they man, got you like, know, X amount of followers you know, or whatever. Plug, and, plug kind of stuff, and it's just like really, they thrive of other people's kind of dreams and make yeah. it their own. So this is lap chong. It's a Chinese, like I say, cured sausage. Very quite sweet. Again, you can get this anywhere these days, man. It's like, like what, what do we got? Pork. Yeah. Pork, pork and spices. spices. I'm, I'm looking forward to also going back to, to these restaurants and getting that vibe, that restaurant vibe back. Yeah. Do you think that uh, the big the big restaurants are going to come back strong or do you think it's going to be small restaurants? Like, what do you think is going to be the size of the restaurants? Like, again, like, like established restaurants? Yeah, established restaurants are going to come back. It's going to be like the who's of who restaurant really that's going to open, you know, of who course. has a strong following already. Yeah. Like I feel sorry for the small business that's opened like six months ago. It's one of those things where it's really hard to tell now. Like. There you go, chef. It only took me an hour and 45 minutes, but on camera, it'll look like I did it in about five minutes. Sweet, so we got all the little side pockets. We're gonna start filling this. This is the mezcal madre. Madre de todos los muertos. So the mother of all of the dead. So, um, mother of is, all death, is that what you said? Yeah, of, of oh. the dead, yeah, the mother of the dead, yeah. Mezcal is actually quite laborious. It's different from tequila. Tequila is a mezcal, not the other way around. Yeah, so right. Mezcal is not a tequila. Uh, so this has actually been um, cooked in an earth pit. Well, they, they dig a hole, build a fire, let it start smoking, and then they start putting, they call it piñas, which is pineapple yeah. in, in English. 
and then they let it smoke for anywhere from seven to ten days. Wow. And then they go through another kind of laborious I love that word, process. laborious. Yeah, it's just, man, it's all manpower. Yeah. Do I smell it? Mm -mm. Oh man, that's sexy ass, bro. Oh. <laughs> it's like minerally and sweet and smoky and... Sorry, what? Yeah, <laughs> that's, you. yeah that's amazing. Mezcal is kicking in, wow. but... Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, what so do you need yeah. me to do next? So we've got the flour for the fried chicken. You can make your own, which is pretty simple. Yeah, dude, but please do. You know, like, again, if you're at home and you're by yourself, and single and alone and desperate, just go to the Asian grocers and buy one of these. The Kentucky. The white bag of good stuff, you know? Oh, you could definitely smell that MSG. Oh, for sure. It's I didn't strong. even see it. You even said hello to me before. Maybe that's just the mezcal talking, but... <laughs> Can you just get the egg whites and put the egg yolk inside? And I'll start. Yolk goes in here? No. Whites go in there? Whites only. Yeah. Is that, is that all right to say? Whites only? It is now. <laughs> it is now. How do you drink mezcal? Do you shoot it or do you drink it like sake? I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, like, um, You kiss... Mezcal. Whoa. I don't really like mezcal mixed in any cocktails or anything. Yeah, right. I like to taste the heart of the agave. But the first time I ever went to Oaxaca, I go up and I sit at the bar and the, the barman was like, yeah, you're going to have a mezcal, right? How many street blocks? And I was like, I don't, I don't know what you mean. And he goes, how many blocks do you want to get out of the, like how, how far, see it's hard. I'm thinking in Spanish. I just got it, I just far, got it. How far, how, how far do you want to get yeah, yeah, after, yeah. You, after you leave here? And I was just like, that's, wow. That's cool. Yeah, so you want to bring it out. That's fine. Bit of salt, sodium crystals. My wrist game's not very strong anymore. Oh really? Yeah. Why's that? You're married, that's why bro. I like. A uh, single boy, what, what four arm uh, action. What are you saying? She whisks for me, hey? Like, hey, my wife actually gets down in the kitchen. Man. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but uh, actually, that's how you and I met is because your sister and my wife are mates. That's right. Yeah. So that's that's how this all. It was began one of those well. like gangster walks, you know? I was like yeah. inside. You were here, like, yeah, just walk like, and go. Hey, what's up? Like, and go, hey, John, what's his name? <laughs> and like, oh, it's Angel. <laughs> well, at first, there's like, I'm. I'm and help. And help. So now we're going to put the filling inside. So a good amount of it. You got to fill it. So push it all the way in. We got one piece there. It's already filled. Looks good. Yeah. Who wants out? You do it like this, blood. Like... Oh, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> all right. So we're going to do the base for the, or the sauce for the chicken wing. We're going to cook the lap chong. Sweat all that. You can start it from a cold pan, bring it up to temperature. That way it's not going to burn. You can already hear the sizzles. As you can see, you want, just, you want to bring it to this nice and caramel. Yeah, you don't yeah, want to burn it. Yeah. So it starts releasing yeah. all of that fat. But wh where did you get the inspiration for this dish anyway? If I'm feeling something like I'm so hungry and I'll just go, I'll do that, I'll do this and do that. In my head, I already know it's going to work. It's not like I sit down there for a week and go, oh yeah, you can do that. It's like, Otherwise, you don't want really to overcook it either because what happens is that when it overcooks, it gets really tough. Yep. So we'll just put that aside and drain the sauce, the oil out. So now you got the, the oil from the lap chong, the fatty goodness of it. So we add the refried beans. Again, there's no rules in this one, so you can add whatever you want to it. You were talking about earlier uh, herbs, some fresh herbs. Yeah. What kind of herbs would you prefer? Coriander. Some shallots. Yeah. Or some, onions, or some shallots. green onions. Yeah. yeah. So oh. now you got the lap chong straight through there. Mm. Bit of XO through it. You, you won't be moving after this. Yeah. Oh. Give me some more. Yeah. So we're just oh. going to let that kind of infuse wow. through a like, bit. Wow. When we get out of COVID, do you think that like dishes like this will be making it onto regular uh, restaurant menus? Like, oh, of actually, course. Like, yeah. Like, obviously, this is going to be like a home style cooking, but this will be more refined in a restaurant. Like, you know, you'd make your own exo sauce. Most people would say, oh, yeah, that's pretty fancy, but yeah. Like, Please. I think if you have a, like a date, would you cook this? Yeah, hell yeah. How's that? 
That's crazy though. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's like, if you cook that for somebody. Mm. So we're just gonna leave that there to cool down a bit. That's pretty much done. See how quick that was? We're gonna coat the uh, chicken wing. So now we're gonna fry the wings. So at home, obviously if you got family and whatnot and kids, this is the adult. This is the adult stuff. You yeah. kind of want the kids out of the way. You yeah. obviously do not want to be drinking mezcal while doing this oh, kind no. of stuff around kids. Mm. We don't have any thermometer, but you just make sure a nice frying temperature about say 200 degrees. So I've sanitized my hands. It's best to use gloves as well. If you guys want to, you know, back at home. So we're going to coat it with the egg white, nice and generous. So what it does with the egg whites, it creates a nice little shell. You gotta remember one wet, one dry. So one hand coats it. So make sure the, the wings are nice and sealed. Straight through there. Crumb it. You gotta make sure it's nice and closed. How can you tell if that oil's on temperature, Chef? I'll show you. Stick a wooden spoon in there. And if it's bubbling, it's ready, but this one's not yet. So it's not ready? Not ready. And we'll double coat it. So remember, one wet, one dry. When it starts bubbling, you know it's ready. <laughs> but you don't want it when too it hot. Starts, when you it starts <laughs> bubbling, you're in trouble. You're in trouble, that's right. You don't want to have it too hot though, because remember, otherwise it works way too hot. That's why you gotta have it so it's nice, 200 degrees. Yeah, we're done. We're on. We're on, man. So I'll probably fry it for about Is six it? minutes. There she is. Yeah. Hello again. It doesn't get much better than that though. Bro, isolation snack 2.0, you know? The main thing that we do in Sabosha is we cook a lot of I mean, open fire. So charcoal cooking is yes. the main thing. And the way how Adam listens to design the menu, it's, just, man, it's amazing. It's bloody f***ing tasty. Machine. It's a machine. It's one of those restaurants that are so busy, but yet it's so fun, but you're still producing quality food on a plate. How many people you guys get through? Or like on a, on a weekend? Oh, like we'll do like on a weekend. Like, like weekend, we'll do 140 covers, easy. We specialize on um, teriyaki, like spit roast chicken. Yep. Is the main thing. You know, everything that we do in-house. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I used to work with a chef, like, you know, he used to tell me, like, if you're frying something, wait till it's like stops bubbling. And you know it's ready. Damn, <laughs> bro. You'd be eating like so, a cardboard yeah, by that yeah. time, I guess like. Yeah. So we'll just do three at a time, because what happens if you put too much stuff in the fryer, it'll cool the fryer down too quickly. You're not gonna get consistent fried chicken at the end. Good point. Yeah. All right, so we've got Damn our first bit. fried chicken right there. Look at that. Shall we fry them all now? Yeah, let's, let's go for it. Yeah, I might even take a photo of that myself, actually. That's pretty. That's really damn good. <laughs> Look at that, bro. So I'm just gonna thin this down a bit, add a bit of liquid into it, a bit of water. If you've got stock, that's even perfect, man. Like chicken yeah. stock, yep. pork stock. So I'm gonna create a sauce with this. Let's put a little bit of mezcal in there, see what happens. So it's pretty good. You can kind of smell that mezcal too. Yeah, I think I'm feeling it too, man. Are anyway. you <laughs> What? Hallucinating or hallucinating? <laughs> hallucinating. Hallucinating. Are you hallucinating yet? <laughs> so I'm just gonna make sure it's cooked right through. Ooh, oh, bro. We should just start a spam stuffed chicken wing shop. <laughs> oh, bro. God. Most underrated vegetable in the world called really? spam. Spam, chicken wings. You can't go wrong with that, right? Match made in heaven. Yeah. And then the sauce. Then the sauce. Make sure you got the nice of the luck time going on. Mm. This was like best served with rice too, bro. Like, there you go. Ooh, that's Joel's XO chicken wings, bro. Stop that. Bon appetito. Ooh. How's that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can hear that. Mm. Yep. That is, that is f***ing seriously not trouble. It's like, <laughs> it's crunchy. You got your spice. You got a little bit of smokiness from the mezcal. Actually, you can actually taste it too. You've got that that kind of tenderness because it's fried to perfection. How do you want to close this? How do you want to bring this all home? Stay positive. It's Stay not positive. The end. Stay positive. It's not the end. It's, it's only the, the beginning. It's only the beginning of Correct. a new era where we were talking Correct. about. Yeah. It's going to be a whole reboot. Exactly. What, what we, call, we called it a reboot. It's a reboot, just going to make sure we give back to Mother Nature and everything else. And Support your local farmers, yeah. support local, yeah. everything local, everything domestic. Support everyone, support a small business, support your family. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Mm. That was fun. Chef, thank you for coming. Thank you. Mind Society Studios. 
2020, 2021, we're coming. Cheers, Chef, thank you. Thank you. Let's eat. Wow. We'll have some red wine. <laughs>